is the things that are happening are mind blowing. Just it it's astonishing to me. Um, I don't use Windows 11. Okay, I I admit. While I have a computer that nominally has Windows 11 on it, I never use it for anything. I've never hooked it to the internet or anything. <clears throat> Just the other day, I went out to a customer's place. They had a brand new Windows 11 laptop. And it's bad. But, okay, I've poked around with Windows 11. I've adjusted to its crap factor, right? Um, Except... This time when I used Windows 11, I guess they pushed out the uh, the Windows 11 Extra Turbo Shitty Edition update because even more things in Windows 11 were changed, moved, or had subtle behavioral differences or just stuff missing in general that made it even harder for me to do my job. And it's bizarre to me because, see, back in the day, like back in the days of Windows 3.195, okay, it used to be that someone like me would learn keyboard shortcuts or, you know, just get used to various locations of things on screen so we could do muscle memory flings of the mouse to get to them very quickly, you know, or like Alt-Space-C to close a window, Alt-Space-V to move it, Alt-Space... You get the idea. Um, or Alt-Minus if it was a uh, sub-window. So, all these things, okay, the, we learned these... Not because we had to, but because it made work faster. You don't have to know keyboard shortcuts to use a Windows PC today. But we've gotten to the point now <clears throat> where, like, learning commands in a command prompt, like, figuring out the arcane commands to do something, like, once we got past Windows 7, it became basically mandatory to learn these commands that you did not have to know before. For example, if you if you want Network and Sharing Center in Windows 11, how do you get to it? I don't even know anymore. Um, I, I, am, I assume there's a hundred clicks that you have to do to get to it the way that they want to force you to get to it. Uh, that or you can run Control Panel somehow, maybe. Um, or I can just pull up a command prompt or hit Windows R and type ncpa.cpl. That is ncpa.cpl for the chat, right? And it brings up Network and Sharing Center. It brings up, actually, it doesn't bring up Network and Sharing Center. It brings up all of the network interfaces where you can right click on them and hit properties and see all the protocols and bindings and edit your IP address and all this stuff in the classic interface that's always worked perfectly fine and that hasn't changed in Windows NT since Windows 2000, I think. Or maybe XP, I can't remember. It's been a while, though. I mean, that's over two decades worth of development. And they, they're trying to throw it out in favor of this Windows 10 trash that became the Windows 11 trash that made it even harder to find the Windows 7 trash that is actually really useful. So, if you need to go in there and do anything other than what little they've copied into the newfangled settings panels, you need to learn these arcane commands all over again. And there's no guide to them. Nothing has offline help anymore. You, If you go and you ask for help with File Explorer, it forces you to use Microsoft fucking Edge, which is now really just Google Chromium, to go to a web page on Bing, the search engine no one uses or wants or cares about, to tell you how to use your computer that may not even be on the internet to access this bullshit help file where the help file might be up to date all the time because it's on the internet, but maybe your computer hasn't been updated there and it's fallen out of sync with it. And that's just File Explorer. Used to be you had basically a built-in manual for the whole fucking system, and now you don't. Stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. In chat, no, I don't think it's Microsoft trying to get rid of third-party repairmen because they can't. <clears throat> In fact, the thing is, no matter what you do, you, Microsoft, no matter what they do, and this is why Microsoft's not ever going to be able to like seal the system to where only they can do things. Okay, no matter what you do, you'll always have the enterprise. You'll always have customers that run big businesses that make lots of money, that pay for lots of volume licenses for operating systems and servers. 
And those people are going to want to be able to change in and out computers in bulk to fix them themselves quickly. And they're not going to take, well, you have to ship everything. Like, you have to call Microsoft to do anything you want to do for an answer. They're just not. There is no friggin' way that the IT department at some big company's headquarters is going to go, oh, okay, well, we'll just have Microsoft technicians that are increasingly incompetent, by the way, if you've ever looked at Microsoft Answers. Kindly please do a clean boot on your system to, to get your computer to maybe fix and uprun. And if that doesn't work, then fucking wipe out your whole computer and lose all your data, you pleb. Because that's a proper fix. Oh, my, 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 my start menu search doesn't show anything when I type. Please erase your whole computer and start over, you stupid, stupid pleb. Thanks, Microsoft. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's not ever going to happen. If you think for one second that a large business is going to put up with that shit, it, no, it is not going to happen. They will either switch over to Linux systems, which is actually pretty likely if Microsoft was to go that far off the cliff, they would put in the trouble to switch to Linux systems, or, more likely, honestly, they'll just hold everything back. Just ev run everything off of Windows 7, or whatever. Not Windows 11, not, you know, Windows Server 2049, or whatever it is. Or Robotron 2049. You know. Yeah, and th they're not going to be able to pull that off. That's going a little bit too far. And if they pushed that button... Um, I mean, here's the thing, man. <clears throat> Governments in the EU have moved over to open source in varying degrees. Um, I, think, I think the German government's been one of the most proactive as far as shoving everything over to open source. You know, Linux Core and, like, LibreOffice instead of Microsoft Office. You know, that just... But I don't know. It's been a while since I looked into that. But the bottom line is, if if you make your product too difficult to use, too difficult to administer, too much of a pain in the ass, at some point, there are alternatives, even if those alternatives are also a pain in the ass. If you're more of a pain in the ass... I'm just going over here to Lunix land, or to BSD land, where everybody's not allowed to back rub in a mailing list. Don't ask. 